Hello and welcome back to another video. I'm sorry it's been a little while um, and I apologize for some of my b-roll footage because uh, my normal phone that I record with is broken so I've been recording with my backup phone which is not as good. Anyways, moving right along, this is the first in a series of four videos that's going to explain uh, color changing MMU and tool changing printers. Uh, this video is going to cover the hardware, the motion systems, uh, the difference between a tool changer, a color mixer, and an MMU. Um, and then video two is going to cover electronics and firmware, such as the Duet versus and RipRap Firmware 3 versus Clipper on Raspberry Pis and ramps boards and things like that, and Marlin on just about anything. Uh, video three is going to be slicers and techniques. Um, it's just Prusa Slicer, Slick 3R, as um, Tom's 3D pronounces it, um, and Cura. And then video four is going to be bringing it all together and showing how we can get these things to work and uh, tips and techniques on how to get it all going. Um, so without further ado, types of tool changing. Like I said, there's three different types. There's a color mixing, such as the diamond... Um, the diamond print head. Now there's a three and a five print head version of the color version of this. They call the five the true color. Um, Crane came out with a similar printer that um, uses a more compact print head uh, and it's an off-the-shelf printer. Uh, I've heard mixed things about that printer so I'm not sure about it. And then uh, of course the famous Prusa MMU um, which uh, will retract the filament all the way back to the extruder and then push a new filament through the same exposed tube down to one head. So it's a tool swapper, kind of, except you still need to have a purge block to change the colors because there's a little bit in there. Now E3D released some good um, fundamental coverage on this um, for a single tool versus a Chimera, which is um, basically two E3D print heads sharing the same cooler for compact space. Um, my first printer that I had that was color changing, uh, tool changing, used one of these. And uh, the problem with it is if these heads are not perfectly aligned with one another and perfectly aligned with the bed and perfectly aligned with the gantry, um, the heads will collide with what you're printing. And even if they are, a little bit of one color will mix and smear into another and smear it back and forth as it moves across the x-axis or y-axis, depending on how you have it mounted. But it's not really a recommended way of doing things. Um, and you don't see many of these printers anymore. A Cyclops, which is kind of like the Prusa MMU, where it will pull the filament all the way back and then push a new filament all the way in. And you have to purge in between. And they have the Kraken pictured here, which is the page that I'm on. And it's no longer available for obvious reasons of the calibration issues that we talked about just a second ago. I feel that calibration on this would be an absolute nightmare. So there's that. Um, now, of course, there have been upgrades to the Chimera, and that's in the form of this, like this video from Teaching Tech, where he took two V6s and has them swap out with a servo, like that. And that gets the advantage that you don't have ooze and dragging from one head to another. And it's a good, cheap way to get started in uh, um, tool changing if you already have an existing i3, like an A8, or a Prusa, or a uh, um, Monoprice, or something like that, that you don't mind hacking to death to get this kind of action out of. Um, it's a little complicated setting up the servo and everything else, but I'm not going to cover that because uh, Teaching Tech has already done an excellent video on it, and you can uh, go watch that there yourself. Um, now, of course, everybody knows about the uh, E3D's tool changer. Um, core XY 3D tool changers are obviously the most common because they're the fastest, they uh, don't have as much moving mass, you have multiple options for them, calibration's not as difficult, you can do all the calibration in the software, or most of the calibration in the software and not the hardware, which makes things a lot easier. Um, and uh, it's just the hot technology right now. So as you can see, with E3D's tool changer, they have this, uh, they have the coupler, which is what grabs the tools with kinematic couplings, and the uh, 
T that actually grabs and pulls the tool. And as you can see, it's spring-loaded back here to the servo, or stepper motor, which moves the tool. Um, there's multiple ways of doing this. Um, Jubilee does something very similar. You can see it in action. And, uh, of course, my printers that I've done, too, which I think are some of the best options because they're cheap and off the shelf, but obviously I'm biased. So um, I'll, I'll put some B-roll footage of my printers going here. Um, and then of course there's Ultimakers and uh, Alex from Piper is working on the same thing where you have tool changers that magnetically grab heads. So given all that, what are the advantages and disadvantages? Now, Core XY, if you have a big Core XY, like my big Piper 2 enclosed, um, the belt path is very long, and you can get some ringing and harmonics. Um, the smaller tool changer um, that I have is uh, a lot better for accuracy and speed, but obviously doesn't have as many tools, and it doesn't have any subtractive tools or laser tools as well. Um, not that I've used those on my big printer yet, but... I'm getting to it. <laughs> um, so there's those those advantages and disadvantages. There's experimental printers such as the Delta that I'm working on, um, and that uh, that changes tools in a very unique way. I'm still working on that. I'm working on version two of it now, um, which is involving complete rebuild. But we'll get into that later. And then the uh, um, aforementioned IDX. Um, where you have dual independent x-axis and everything else. So going through again, the advantages of a IDX or Chimera dual print head is simplicity and ease of access with existing printers where you don't have to get a Core XY to do it. Um, then you have the tool changers using Core XY, which are a lot more powerful, have a lot more features, have easily swappable tool heads, less mass that moves around, therefore for faster printing, you're on the uh, more advanced Core XY platform, um, which is arguably better for detail and speed. Um, and, uh, and then the experimental fields like deltas and things like that that are just getting tool changing now. So that's a basic coverage of the different platforms and layouts for tool changing in, uh, um, in the 3D printing realm right now. This is going to be the fastest and most overall arcing video of the series, so don't be disappointed if you're going, this one's ending already? Because we'll get to uh, electronics and firmware, which will be a nice meaty episode um, coming up hopefully soon. All right, thank you again. Thanks for watching.